Okay, this is just a quick and rough video going over how to import a pick away cartridge on the new version of Scorpion Editor. Uh, so we've got our new button there. Uh, we get just a bit of a warning, I'll go over some of the stuff um, when I import it. Uh, so we to start with, we need our P8 file. It's not going to work with a PNG.P8. Uh, if you have a PNG.P8 and you want to import it into Scorpion, then you can convert it, but you have to do it through the um, Pico console itself. So let's open up uh, JLP, which is a game that comes with a Pico 8. Uh, we need to save it somewhere, so I'll make a new folder for it. Okay, so I'll just quickly go over um, what we've done, how we've imported it. So you notice that um, we've got the pick away palette here. It's actually duplicated, so both the bottom half and the top half of the 32 color palette have the same set of colors. The reason for this is, is uh, if you're working on converting a pick away game, you may want to flag some of the assets as being hardware sprites uh, for a little bit better performance and so having it set up that way makes it nice and easy. Uh, if we go into panels, we can see the label of the cartridge is imported as a panel. So if you wanted to use that as a title screen, something like that, you could do that. Uh, under the Maps tab, um, we've imported the tile set here. Now you notice it looks a little bit weird on the bottom half. Uh, that's because of a quirk with the Pico 8 itself where uh, in your tile set, you can choose whether you want 256 sprites to fill the entire tile set or whether you want to use the bottom half as a map. So this bottom half here is used. Uh, so that, that's basically map data you see there. And if we switch over to actually imported map, uh, you scroll right down the bottom. And that what you see there is the this map data came from the bottom half of that tile set. So you can see we've got the um, the map is imported, the tile set is imported. Um, if we edit the tile set, um, if we click on some of these tiles, we can see these are already flagged as solid. Now the problem is uh, I've got no way of um, testing which tiles are actually meant to be solid. What the Pico 8 does is it lets you flag, use eight flags on a tile to determine um, special attributes. And uh, those attributes could be different for different games. So I basically just said, okay, well, if you've got any flag set for a tile, just assume it's solid by default. Uh, not all of these are actually um, solid tiles, but we uh, obviously we can um, we can tweak these as we do a conversion. Uh, so far as the code goes, I can't translate the lure automatically, and the Pico 8 has a lot of features that just won't be able to run in Scorpion one way or the other. Like um, you would never be able to import the Doom game just because it uh, relies on a lot of um, well, a lot of advanced maths, um, a lot of needing to be able to update every individual pixel on screen, every frame. But what it does do is it imports all of the Lua code as comments that are, well, uh, everything's disabled. So if you really did want to do a faithful port of a Pico 8 game, you'd have to go through each of these and then convert them to the uh, what it's meant to be. Okay, um, now we we don't import any um, sound effects or music. Uh, it's something um, uh, I'm not sure if I'll ever be able to do that, if I'll ever be able to add that to the importer. In regards to making an animated character, uh, what we'll do, we'll just, we'll make a new animation in the sprites folder, and I'm just going to call this uh, anim idle right. And then I'm just going to grab the, just going to grab the player character there. Um, move the curve up so it's aligned. 
Um, I'll make a copy and then I'll just flip that. I think that will do. Just create an active little player. Make him a uh, controllable platformer. I'll just set some uh, just set some test values. Oh, and I've got to actually set the um, set animations. Have to align this character so he starts in the middle of the tile. Oh, and I need to check the collision box. So I'll use something like that. So now I've created a player that I can use. I, um, I'll need to add him to the map. So if I edit the map, I can already see that there's a tile that was used for the player. So I'm going to need to uh, get rid of that. And then I'll grab my actor from the actor's tile set, put it there in its place. And the only other thing I need to do to run this is I need to go to my startup script and I need to say, um, well, I just need to load the level. So load level map. And now I can, um, I can run it. So I'll open my Amiga emulator. And there we go. Um, so it's not um, it's not very impressive at the moment. Um, there's a lot of um, a lot of tweaks that need to be done. The character is able to do a dash attack, so that needs some um, uh, fancy scripting. Um, I can walk on the grass for some reason, so the grass must have been flagged as having a special attribute um, that needs to be fixed. Uh, also, the background should be blue, and it should be, uh, it's meant to have a um, scrolling mountain parallax, so that needs to be implemented one way or another. Uh, but yeah, you get the idea. So very quickly, we can at least get the map data, the sprite data, the tile set data into Scorpion and have something we could actually play around with and start making changes to. The only other thing I wanted to mention is that the Picker 8's resolution is 128 by 128 uh, with 8 by 8 tiles. That wouldn't work very well with Scorpion because uh, Scorpion's tiles are hard-coded as 16 by 16 wide. So what this does is it scales up all the graphics by 2. Um, you might have also noticed that the scrolling... Seem, might seem to be a bit smoother than it is on the Pico 8, and that's because of the doubled resolution, because we can scroll by um, half of a Pico 8 pixel. And yeah, I think that's about it.